Hi friends, how are you today? Uh, today and this week for reading, we're going to be working on taking our work a little bit further in that cause and effect, okay? We're going to be looking at some sequencing and how things go together. So um, you know that yesterday, or Monday, I put out this cause and effect. When one thing happens, causes another thing to happen, all right? When we're doing cause and effect, we're kind of also putting things in sequence or in order, all right? So let me flip this over for you. And when we did a lot of our writing this year, we talked about putting words sequentially or in order and using sequence words. And we had sequence words like first, second, third, those ordinal numbers. What order are things in? We also uh, learned about how to tell and retell stories by using before this happened, after this happened, next, and in the end. Also, in nonfiction, which is what we're working on right now, we know, especially when we're talking about animals, a lot of things that happen in nature go in sequence or in order by the seasons, in the spring, in the summer. When I have to put things in sequence, when they're in that specific way, it's kind of easy peasy lemon squeezy. But sometimes reading and putting things in sequence or in order aren't those first this happens, next this happens. For example, if you remember last week, I read to you about how these frogs and toads camouflage themselves and keep themselves safe. That's an adaptation to their bodies. Do you remember this guy here? That guy, when he senses danger, he tucks his red feet underneath his body. So when I read this though, I don't hear first, next, then, or before, after, I hear this. The red-eyed tree frog hides its bright legs and toes by folding them under itself. The frog does this once it hears danger. So I don't hear first he hears danger, next he puts his toes and feet underneath him. But as a reader, I have to dig a little deeper and think, oh, I could tell this in order, the sequence. First, he needs to hear or see or sense danger in some way. Then he's going to hide his bright red body parts, okay, his feet and his toes. So today, what you're going to do is you're going to be looking at a sequence activity that I have given you. Some of the sequence activities of this happened, then this happened, are using those very specific words. First, next, then, after that, before that. Some of them don't. You have to kind of infer what's going on, all right? So it's a multiple choice activity. Try to think back. Try to visualize that multiple choice uh anger chart we had in our classroom, remember the strategies for solving multiple choice. When you come across something that's multiple choice, remember that you read the questions and find the keywords. Are there some of these keywords in there? First, then, before, and after? Are they highlighted or bold-faced so that we can see them and our brain can be really looking for them? Second, remember, we think to ourselves, what do we think before we even look at any of the choices what do I think might be a logical answer to this question? Then I'm going to read through all of my choices. Because remember, sometimes there's a good choice and a better choice. You don't want to just look at that first choice and go, oh, yeah, that's right, and move on. And then you're going to indicate either by highlighting it or deleting the other choices, and then you're going to send that to me, okay? All right, off you go to work, working on that reading sequencing. See you later. Bye-bye.